before we get going, here is a wiring diagram for a lift almost identical to this one. I want to go through it all with you in a future video, but this video is all about prodding and moving stuff. You'll wonder why I'm prodding everything with a washing up brush. This is for two reasons. One, it's the only suitable non-conductive item I could find in a hurry. And two, I'm treating the equipment as if it were live. I'm trying to be as responsible as possible. And I'm not going to show you the direct handling of high voltage equipment, whether it's on or off. If you were to touch any live equipment and it were to blow your head off, then I'd like to think that the suggestion didn't come from my channel. Something unusual at the end of this video, I will be giving you some hand-picked video links to explain the basics on how some of the items work that are featured in this video. This is a DC motor. So how do we run a DC motor from a normal mains AC main supply? There are two methods. One is using a DC generator. The other method is by using a very spooky mercury arc rectifier. This is a pretty brutal controller. Any terminations are done with nuts and bolts onto these exposed terminals. Touching one of these would blow your head off if it were live. The up-down relays switch power directly to the motor for the direction required. A relay always moves itself with the electromagnet which is the giant thing behind the U and D at the top. This is the down relay that I'm moving. These are massive relays, but you have to remember that this is technology for 1905. The up and down relay should not come on at the same time. Only a malfunction could let this happen, but normally there is something physical that blocks the path of the other relay from coming on. This is also known as an interlock, but these do not appear to have this. At the bottom is a set of contacts that join together when the relay is off. When this relay comes on, it disconnects the other relay's electromagnet. So, while the down relay is on, the up electromagnet is disconnected and vice versa. When you press a call button, either on the landing or inside the lift, one of these relays is activated. One of the switches on the relay then places a short circuit over your call button, which keeps it active after you've released the button. This wiring configuration is called a latching relay. This lift can only handle one call at a time, so the other call buttons are disconnected while the lift is running. This is a pretty amazing piece of engineering, it's called an accelerator. It controls the power input to the motor. The moving rod is driven up and down by this giant electromagnet. There is an up and down test switch on the other side of the controller. Standard micro switches did not exist in 1905, so here are the contacts that join together when the buttons are pushed on the other side. Beside the up-down test buttons is a knife switch. This is a switch in a very basic form. The knife switch is basically a piece of metal joining up contacts. Power connects from the middle to either the top or the bottom connector. When it's moved down, the top terminal is disconnected which turns off all the call buttons so an engineer can work on the lift without interruption. With the knife switch pushed into its bottom terminal, this enables the up-down test buttons on the right. I suppose this is a very early inspection mode switch. This is my favourite part of any old lift, the floor selector. Thanks to some help from Pete Lomas, I understand totally how this works and what each contactor does. These contacts are pushed in and out by the wheels underneath. The switches on this selector are massive as they have to be big enough to handle the current that goes through them to the motor. 
later designs had much smaller switches, which operated a relay instead. The relay would then switch power to the motor. But in 1905, relays are in their infancy and are massive. Each switch on the selector represents the lift arriving or leaving a floor. Much more on how this switch logic works and a full demonstration of this floor selector in motion in the next video. The floor selector is turned by the drum drive. This accelerator is basically a set of six switches on the left are metal bars. The three middle ones are bronze, probably because they've been replaced and are newer than the others. These are half of the six switches. The other half of each switch is on the other side. The moving contact on the rod joins each switch together as it rises. The rod is so large that I struggle to raise it, especially when using a washing up brush. But look at the sheer size of this electromagnet. It makes you wonder how much electricity this whole lift used to use. On the other side of the accelerator is a cage. Inside are resistors that restrict the amount of current that can flow to the motor. When the accelerator is at the bottom, none of the resistors in the cage are bypassed. So only a small amount of current can get to the motor, making it run slowly. As the accelerator rod rises, the six switches gradually bypass the resistors in the cage until it reaches the top, where all the resistors are bypassed, allowing the motor to achieve full speed. The rod is pulled up by the massive electromagnet. This whole unit is just a very crude speed controller. There is another part to this accelerator. At the top of the electromagnet is an air chamber. If this rod was unregulated, then it would rise in an instant and there would be little point in having an accelerator in the first place. In this screw thread is a slot with an adjustable nut that covers it. This creates a very basic air valve. The amount of air controls the speed of the rising accelerator rod. Thank you. 
Next time, I will be turning this floor selector for the first time in 30 years and explaining the circuit logic. And I put it back the way I found it afterwards, as you should always respect something that doesn't belong to you, no matter if it's never going to work again. That's nearly the end of the video, but if you want to find out more about some of the devices that I mentioned, here are some video links to other YouTube videos, all hand-picked by me. I love explaining stuff, but sometimes there are videos already on YouTube that do a better job. All links should appear above as cards for you to click. The first link is for a DC generator, which converts AC to DC. DC was preferred for controlling motors as motors were much more controllable with DC. When you see this video, imagine the AC motor on the left connected to the mains, then the DC motor on the right giving out the voltage to run the lift motor. Here is another link showing an actual DC generator in the lift motor room. The next link is for a mercury arc rectifier. Anyone that bumps into one of these devices in a dark room will be freaked out big time. There are two links coming up for this one. The first is from Photonic Induction. Anyone that doesn't know about his channel must be living in a cave. I really admire this guy for his sense of humor and over the top experiments. And catchphrases like, I want flames. How did anyone think of making a DC voltage from electrical arcing from a pool of mercury in a glass vacuum? The next link is about how a DC motor works. This is a truly fantastically made video so simple and understandable. Here we have one of my most popular videos about how a latching relay works. A latching relay is how an old lift remembers something, such as a call button that was pressed. 